Oh baby, welcome back to Crown's Kittle Cave. It's 2020, my friends. New year, new me. No, no, new bullshit is what, is what that is. Anyways, a lot to talk about on Bitcoin because we do have a new yearly, we do have a new monthly, we do have a new quarterly, we do have a new bi-monthly as well. Holy shit, man, there's a lot to talk about today as far as the long term goes. We've had clarity on a lot of situations and uh, I think a lot of people are in for a big surprise today, actually. In fact, um, yesterday we did see that little pit, that that little pitiful pump to 7300 that we spoke about. I was looking for a little bit more to 7350-ish region, but close enough is close enough, selling off extremely fast afterwards getting that quick wick to the upside so that i want to focus on a lot for the lower time frames and of course because it is uh because it is the new year and it is the holiday season and all that good stuff it's time to shill baby no i'm just kidding but but of course all programs are on sale for the next day so this is probably gonna be the last time or maybe tomorrow i guess i'll have another i guess i'll do it again because there's another hour or sorry day and 15 hours but all the programs are on sale with 20% off. No code is needed. That's both the TA program and the options program. The TA program is the one that is probably most applicable to most people if this is even something that you should be interested in to begin with, which is probably not very many people to begin with. Uh, definitely take advantage of all the free content first. The TA 101 playlist uh, is 100% free on YouTube and also, of course, all these streams as well. And, uh, and from there, you can probably figure out if this is something that you want to do or something that you don't want to do. Uh, these programs are very, very long, so make sure that you actually have enough time to do them as you won't be getting anything out of them if you don't have, you know, literally <laughs> 35 hours plus long for both of them. And uh, they're, re they're realistically meant to be watched multiple times each. The TA program is the all-encompassing program that doesn't just go over TA, but also uh, risk management, position management, understanding underlying market dynamics, and, well, a lot more, as, <laughs> again, is very, 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 very long. And it's actually doubled in size since I first uh, made it, uh, the inception. The Master Your Options program is similar to the TA program, except it's just focused on options. So it's not similar at all, in fact. And, and uh, it's a much more difficult program. It is less applicable to more people um, because, well, it's require, it's, it requires a bigger learning curve. However, the payoff is bigger as well, as, uh, as learning options is pretty much the base of my game. And that, I mean, that's where I was, you know, that's where I was a professional uh, trader on the floor of New York Stock Exchange, ARCA, as a market maker authorized trader with equity options. So um, that one's near and dear to my own heart. But, you know, for, for, for every, like, for every one, per, for every, like, t uh, one per, 10 people that, one person that's, in, that's, that's interested in the TA program, like, a tenth of a person should be interested in this one, you know, <laughs> then that's pretty much what it is. Um, anyways, uh, I think that's enough for the showing today. Um, some people getting like very, very angry about that. Understand that this is free content. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to do anything. In fact, I spend more, more time convincing you not to buy it because, and the reason why I get this a lot, people are, people say like, crown, you're doing that reverse psychology again. You're trying to take advantage of us. No. Um, it's because I actually, do, it's because I actually want people who are on the fence not to get into it. I only want people who are like very, very sure to get into it because those people are a lot easier to work with and they're self motivated and well if you really are going to be successful in this endeavor or any endeavor for that matter you me saying a few words that are like making it sound a little bit more harder than perhaps it might be if that gets in your way you're not going to be fucking successful to begin with so <clears throat> You know, I like to put that up as a little bit of a smoke screen. There's the fucking, there's the real secret of it all. And uh, and then, you know, it, it makes people's results better because, you know, they self-qualify themselves anyways. So a lot better uh, in that regard. Anyways, um, what else we want to talk about? The uh, crown trading application will be coming out uh, hopefully soon. Our lazy developers, just kidding. <laughs> they're beautiful. They're awesome. They're great, but they are fucking lazy. No, they, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just giving them some shit. Um, uh, should have it ready, uh, hopefully soonish. Don't really want to stick to a date here. I know that this is annoying. It's, it's very frustrating for myself as well. Don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, it is for good reason. We found a way to implement all um, all devices, all operating systems. And that will also be free for all the people complaining as well. It's like, Jesus Christ, man. Where does the entitlement come from? Nobody knows. But those people are fucked to begin with. So, anyways, won't focus on them any, any longer. But I do want to, um, uh, uh, but I do want to make that, uh, I, I do want to make that statement because I haven't really been talking about it recently. That also means that the Jewel will come back out around the same time as well, uh, preferably on the same date. And uh, again, hopefully relatively soon, which is all, which is obviously not that helpful, but hopefully within this next week, if I could say so. Um, what else do I have to say? Um, 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 oh yeah, oh man, this is great. Okay, so I'm actually gonna, gonna go into the charts for this one, but uh, oh, oh yes, Jackie's, uh, Jackie's group is, um, is uh, is ready for sign up? He'll be starting at the end of this week, I believe it is. And uh, there's a link in the description of this video as well, obviously to the programs as well, with the CrownTrading.net website. Forgot to mention that terrible, terrible, terrible Crown. Um, but uh, but there's another thing that I actually have new on this channel, and I'm so fucking happy about this because 
uh, pro- probably a lot of people out there don't know, but there are a lot of people who are uh, trying to scam the programs that I just showed. And uh, I've actually hired an agency to deal with all of that, to deal with all the copyright infringements, and we'll go with that, go after the uh, the infringers legally. So all the people who have been doing that, get ready. <laughs> it feels fucking good as well. Um, but the scammers have have actually taken another route, and what they've been doing, and this is fucking great, man. This is just poetic. What they've been doing if they, is they've been taking my free content on YouTube, the stuff that I've had in the TA. One, the, the TA 101 playlist, the, the, uh, the, the trading strategies playlist as well, which you get very little views actually, funnily enough. And then they've been actually presenting that as the scammed pro, uh, programs and trying to sell that to people, which is just, I mean, <laughs> I have very little love lost for people who, you know, um, who, who, who do something like that. Um, but for the people who are getting scammed, you know, who might not know any better, which does seem to be quite, uh, quite um, reasonable, uh, you know, I do feel bad for them. So what I've done here is I've actually taken all of those videos all the ones that they've been presenting as a TA program. And what I've done is I've, been, is I've made them available only to members. So if you're in the TA program, uh, you already have access to them through through that venue. Um, and uh, and for the rest, it's actually available to the members of this channel. Um, it, no matter what, uh, what tier you're on, I think there's like a $5 tier, a $10 tier, and a $25 tier. I made it available for all. I don't want people to feel obligated to do anything like that. But I do want to uh, severely fuck, um, you know, people who scam. Uh, so, <laughs> so why not, man? A little bit of pettiness to start off the new year. Um, but yeah, you know, if you you'll notice that if you are a member on this channel, of which there's very few, um, but the little join tab below, uh, you actually have a lot of new videos uh, available to you. In fact, a lot of them are coming from straight up the TA program, actually, and uh, in one of them uh, from the base program of the options program. So, um, I wanted to give a little bit of a gift for the holiday season. Also, uh, take away from from some of the scammers who have been like literally selling my free content which is just hilarious man it's fucking hilarious uh but finally found out a solution for that and uh and again i know that's gonna piss some people off as well crowns crown wants money it's like oh well money's not fucking evil man i mean money's great um but uh you know i that's you know that is the uh, the purpose for that so again for the people you know who actually uh, who actually want to get into that i want to make sure that that's available and now let's talk about some goddamn match in money business because uh well we have a lot to talk about today so we did close all um we did close pretty much every higher time from yesterday night and uh, a lot of things are shaping up here so i'm sure a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people a lot of people are gonna fall for this one um <laughs> this is fucking great a lot of people are gonna say crown we closed above the 21 exponential moon average we are bullish <laughs> well 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 my friends and now <laughs> this is just without comment this is fucking great <laughs> Uh, the accumulation distribution indicator, which no one fucking watches, but, um, uh-oh, slope is down, bitch! First down slope that we've had in quite some time, man. I'm getting really fired up today, man. It's <laughs> it's, it's a good start to the new year, perhaps. Um, yeah, slope is down on this one. Um, longer term, that is not good. Anytime that we have that we have had a downward slope on this, uh, Bitcoin is either in the midst of a very intense downwards market, um, like like an actual bear market, or it's having one of those pretty severe pullbacks. Um, so uh, just a slope of this indicator has actually gotten the monthly trend, um, like the macro trend, extremely well. And uh, and anytime that we've have that that we had that we have had a negative slope, um, those are either our 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 very our very intense downwards um, actions in overall bullish markets, or are quite little bearish markets. You know, more and, and more um, weight on the uh, on the secondary of that statement. Um, so yes, you know that's telling us that that last month was distribution. So let's actually go down to the lower time frames now. With that in mind, again, distribution on the monthly. Well, what does this look like right here? Well, we have lower lows and lower highs the whole way through. We are seeing the rolling hills of distribution right in front of our face. In fact, Bitcoin getting rejected by the 10 simple right here, once again, below all major moving averages. The 10 simple has crossed the downside of the yellow 20 minutes moving average, and we are trending once again. We have a downwards trend, my friends. So this is, I believe, um, you know, due to the monthly accumulation distribution indicator, this is to be considered distribution on, you know, on the lows essentially. So what are we getting? We're also getting a descending triangle. And I do believe that that is best represented by the two day as uh, the two day showing our support right around about 60, uh, 6,900. Uh, resistance wherever the 21 exponential moving average is kind of coming in this yellow moving average right here and it's slowly but surely converging on it we have lost the 10 simple as of the last closure and so far we are not we are we are we are getting rejected by the 10 simple um, on this uh, on this on this fresh two-day dildo right here so I would say that structure is bearish trend is bearish 
uh, higher time frames are obviously bearish as well, and uh, and and the monthly is also quite concerning here too. So what I would say is the monthly is very very powerful, and going back to it just for a second, right and over here, I don't think that there's any reason to be looking for a potential reversal on Bitcoin um, until we get back above last month's high, which was seventy seven 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 essentially. Um, so about 700 bucks or sorry about 600 no 500 bucks up from where we are right now so actually not that far away um, but if you are bullish what you're looking for is you're looking for Bitcoin to just not break the 21 uh, this month I do think that regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish we will get another move lower um, not necessarily making new lows if this is going to actually put in a low here but if 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 Bitcoin is actually in the bottom here I would not expect to see the 21 exponential mean average broken on a monthly closing basis but I would expect to see another test down probably somewhere right around six 60, 67, 6,800, something like that um, within that region. Um, however, you know, the odds, I believe, are in the favor of the uh, of the bears for this month. Now, when we're talking about a monthly, obviously, this is a long term price action. So am I saying that this is going to happen today or tomorrow? No, I'm in fact, not at all. Um, but I do think that things are set up here and it go and it brings us back to this critical area right here on the two day, which again is a beautiful, well, maybe not so beautiful if you're bullish, a beautiful uh, descending triangle on the low. So until we actually do fully and formally break this area right here at about 6900, this is still all just theoretical and, and uh and, uh, and not really actionable as far as the greater time frames go. But the second that we actually do that, now we have a resolution of this as distribution, as a descending triangle with a measure move all the way down here to 61, 6200 ish region, basically where this blue box territory is, which is actually uh, in the upper fives as well, uh, comes as a good region. And we do see that this whole um, th this whole formation right here as a falling channel, like the greater formation, that actually still be within the bounds of that and would imply, and would imply a resolution date somewhere um, in the middle of, of the second week of January, somewhere right around here is where these things statistically become extremely likely to blow. So I don't believe that we're going to get a, I don't believe that we're going to break this range, you know, for this week, um, probably not even next week or sorry, may, uh, maybe a little bit in the next week. Um, but somewhere around here is where it becomes extremely likely to. So somewhere around the middle of January, I'd say. And, uh, and that actually would be very much in line with the same trend line that's been holding up all of our lows this whole way through. Remember that that will have another major effect if we actually do meet this target down around here, if this gets initiated. And this is very far away. So I'm making a lot of assumptions here. So please do not, please do not say, uh, take this as like crown and saying that this is going to happen 100%. No, understand all the things that need to happen. But if we were to initiate this measure move that would obviously take us below last month's low and if we do take out last month's low i do not believe that this is going to be a any you know i, I don't believe that's going to be a stopping point right here or anything like that it strongly diminishes the chance of any sort of a bottom being put in this region if we are going to put in a bottom in this region um which i think which i still actually think is possible but i think the probabilities of that are, are not are not very high um then you know I, I would not expect to see last month's low taken out the second that we do that bad and uh very very likely that we'll make our way much 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 lower and in fact, from a moving average perspective, it would be somewhere around the 55 exponential mean average, which is finally getting its way into the uh, mid to low five, or sorry, about lower 5,000. It's not necessarily around that mid 5,000 target just yet. So I do think that longer term, if this were to break down, it probably doesn't, like that full on breakdown, that full on meltdown does not happen until like February, maybe March, something like that. It would probably give some more time for this 55 to crawl its way up to the mid five. So a lot of things lining up with that, that also would agree with our volume profile as well from a higher time frame perspective saying that, hey, the second that we lose this area right here, the second that we lose essentially uh, 68, 6900 ish region, it's kind of a free fall. Let's actually zoom it out a little bit more so we can get some more uh, some more color on this. And really, we don't have this next sort of spike on the uh, you start, uh, spike on on a higher value node until the low six thousands essentially, which is exactly where, if you look at this right and over here, exactly where that next targeted region would be. And also lining up with kind of our lows that that uh, that low side support of twenty eighteen as well. So a lot of good structural things from a long term perspective coming in around there. But remember, a lot of things need to happen before that even becomes a reality. But that is you know what I think is potential um, you know in in the first quarter of this uh, of this new year speaking of quarter let's go to the quarterly and the quarterly is we got a new quarterly as well i haven't looked at this one actually at all just yet get rid of the volume profile on this one it's not going to be too helpful um oh we didn't <laughs> the blx actually hasn't populated a new quarterly yet but uh but of course uh stamp has uh we did close below the 10 simple on the quarterly i believe the 10 simple was 72 13 and a half we closed 71 68 spot uh, 3 6 so uh we actually got our first close below it's for a long time now there's not too there's not really enough history on this one to give it a full-on analysis from that from that uh, perspective but i would say that um you know even just the open of that last quarterly which was 
was wow that's actually all the way uh, all the way up at 8300 is probably still going to be a sell up there um which is quite nasty and we should see momentum oscillators uh get a little bit more squeezed here we do see that quarterly stokes are uh they are still up to be fair but they are not as erect as they were you know a couple months ago and not only that accumulation distribution indicator is still very much extremely negative although i don't i don't put all that much weight on it on a quarterly i just don't think that the quarterly is is that trustworthy to begin with because we, we need like another 10 years of history really um looking at uh quarterly rsi not not really too much make off this you know we got rejected from the bullish control zone what are we doing here it, doesn't not really too much to say on top of that unfortunately so um but uh, uh, but uh, but i do want to show that more importantly we do see that the 21 expansion average is is around 5,000 now so we are seeing a lot of higher time frame things start to crawl its way up into the mid to low 5,000s, which i do believe is going to be the secondary targeted region um if we do break to the south side of this formation Remember, we have the full-on bearish splayed effect of all major moving averages right here. Once again, we see all major moving averages with the negative slope. We see all major moving averages with lower periods below higher periods, and we even see the 200 simple curling down as well. The last time that we saw a uh, an example of this was back on over here in May of uh, sorry March of 2018. No, May of 2018 on this rejection from 10,000. Bitcoin tests the 200 simple a couple times, gets rejected both times. Boom, down, death cross right here, green and purple. Uh, all lower periods below higher periods right here with the cyan and the purple being the last ones all major moving averages have negative slopes bitcoin is held below the yellow 21 exponential moving average the whole way through and we are trending as long as we are below the 21 exponential moving average um you know with uh with that regard so going back into the more proximal times very very similar setup bitcoin um you know bitcoin tops out over here bitcoin tests the 200 simple a few times it gets above it that's okay these aren't fractals these aren't these don't need to be exact the same we're looking at moving averages the focus is on moving averages not fucking fractals which i really despise um where are you going to manage risk on a fucking fractal for example i mean Jesus Christ, good luck with that. Um, it's like you always, the, the fractal people just always move their stop a little bit lower because it's like, well, it could bottom here and it would still be the fractal. And it's like, you could just, you know, do like this. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> um, anyway, so if, if fractal has been working for you, don't, don't listen to my silly face. Um, but yeah, you know, Bitcoin gets rejected by the 200 simple right here. Uh, we get the death cross right here, green and purple. We get all lower periods below higher periods right here. All major moving average with a negative slope right here. Bitcoin below all major moving average right here. The 21 rejects Bitcoin the whole way. And by the way, the 21, the yellow, the yellow 21 expansion moving average right here, that the only time that we've gotten above it were on weekends. And weekends are notorious for shitty price, not shitty price action, but price action that is contrary to the week's direction and usually a washout of over leveraged positions. And in this example right here, I do believe that that's what we're looking at. Um, if we go over to CMEs, you'll see that there is no closes at all whatsoever above the 21 the whole way down. Anyways, back on to spot price action. And, uh, and and not only that, but uh, the 200 simple is starting to curl down as well. You know, I do think that at some point in time, we will we will probably pop back up around there, similar to how we did back around here. But as long as we're below the daily 200 simple, which is this white moving average, um, I'm, I'm overall bearish. I'm overall bearish. So we could rally up, you know, a couple thousand bucks from this price point and still and still meet, meet you know, meet some heavy resistance right around here. Why is that important? Well, because that's at 93, 9200-ish region right now. And that's actually below our last prior high on the weekly. And I will not call a reversal on Bitcoin. Not that Bitcoin can't reverse, um, but I will not call a reversal officially until we get a higher high and a higher low. And to get a higher high, we'd have to, well, quite literally go up above 9500. What it seems more likely to me is that uh, on the monthly, <clears throat> on the monthly, we are in limbo here. And what we've done is we set in a, we set in a lower high right here, but now we're going to find out: do we set in a higher low, and where do we set in the higher low, or do we actually set in a lower low, which would be pretty drastic? I think that that's a little bit too far away for me to really consider. Um, but as far as the order of operations for the downside. First and foremost, I would actually treat the current area that we have based off of as a potential low until we actually fully and formally break it, which has not happened just yet, although it's getting damn close. Um, but technically speaking, it's, you know, until we actually fully and formally break it, I wouldn't call it broken. Um, uh, if that one does, you know, if, if that does happen, the next target that I'd be looking down towards is in the mid fives between 5,500 and like 5,300 down around here and below there, I'd be looking at the... Uh, I'd be looking at the 377 on BLX right here, which actually has enough uh, price action history to populate itself. And that would be coming in around the low, uh, the mid to low 4,000, which also the 786 Fibonacci retracement. So we got the 200 simple and 200 exponential average kind of uh, outlaying the mid to low 5,000s. 
So I do like all those areas in order of operation now. Uh, while we do focus a little bit more on the higher time frames, I, I, I promise I'll get to the lower time frames in a bit. Um, but looking at the three-day right here, we do have hidden bearish divergence in very likely in play. It has not been initiated just yet, but we have this setup. We have uh, higher highs on RSI oscillator, lower highs on price action as it is thus far, but we do not have a confirmed local high um, on, on the three-day just yet. We need to trade below the low of this three-day dildo, which on stamp was 70.52. On uh, Mexico, I believe it was like 70.60. Yeah, 70.60. So if we do even just trade below, don't even need to really close below, but just trading below, this is gonna be confirmed as another, as another local high, which is a lower high, which is a lower high compared to these two guys right here, which initiates hidden, hidden bearish divergence down here. And that's going to likely bring us back down to the low side of the range. At the very least, it'd bring us back down to like 6,900. But personally speaking, I do think that we make another run down here. And that's going to have the avalanche of effects of breaking our descending triangle to the downside, which initiates another mesh move down to, you know, low 6,000s. And while I do think that we would bounce in the low 6,000s, I don't think it'd be anything more than that. We'd very likely get continuation overall to the mid 5,000s. It's just going to take its time. It's going to be a while. And this market is going to do a very good job, uh, as it typically does, as making everyone extremely impatient by taking its time you know on its you know on its uh, downwards moves anyways um looking at the three day or sorry do i want to no, don't really want to look no there's not there's nothing else i want to see on the three day uh two day two day stokes rejecting the bullish control zone and down and i believe yeah we're, we're getting rejected from the same area that we've been getting rejected from ever since july of 2019 um so basically when the high was put in right in over here at 12,500. um let's see is the jewel saying anything jewel's not really saying anything on a daily um daily rsi looks kind of bearish daily stokes coming down um what else do we have uh, i think the let's let's check out the weekly jewel so this one's still getting some fall through here it's actually kind of curling back up right now as price action slumps on downwards so yeah i, I would say the next biggest thing for bitcoin to do is to take out last week's low which was about 70 50. again check your exchange for that but uh, it will be a little bit different here and there um, if that does happen, then yes, uh, I would be looking for a move back down, uh, probably, you know, at the very least 6,900. But per personally speaking, I do think that we'd actually uh, close below um, and that's going to initiate all of those other downstream effects. Now, let's talk about the upside. You know, it's, it's all, as, as always, it's always possible for Bitcoin to whip back around until we actually do fully informally, uh, uh, well, initiate this. And uh, for me, um, I'm not bullish on Bitcoin until we get back above. And, and bullish is the wrong term. I'm not short term or medium term bullish on Bitcoin until we get back above this prior high right here. Same thing as, you know, the last week or two, um, which was about 7,500, 7,550 on, a, on at the very least a 12 hour closing basis, preferably a daily two day would be great. Um, and then, yes, I'd actually target a move immediately towards like 78, 7,900. And very, very likely we'd actually work our way back up to um, uh, 85, 8600. To be fair to the bulls here, we do still have a descending broadening wedge in play, which is which is typically a uh, a bullish resolve formation. Now, a descending broadening wedge, this guy right here, you know, does imply that we could test the bottom side of the wedge again, so we can stay in it for quite some time. And that bottom side of the wedge would actually be coming in around the low 6,000. So, um, you know, we could test the bottom side of the wedge, uh, bounce back up above it again, and then, you know, and, and then break this guy to the upside, which again, I would I would consider broken if we actually do in, uh, sorry, broken and confirmed if we break back above 7550-ish region. And then yes, a measure move all the way up here to the, uh, to the blue box territory in the uh, mid 8,000s, which would be, would be basically in line with the long-term downturn resistance um, coming in all the way from our high at 14,000. So that's the only way that I, that I kind of flip around to like medium term, uh, short term bullish um, right now. I mean, like very, very short term, you know, you're going to have your ebbs and flows, of course. Uh, but I, I don't want to get confused with those terms right now. Uh, very, very short term. Speaking of which we can get into right now, um, we do see that uh, four hour stokes headed up right now, which usually get things right three hour stokes in the same posturing two hour stokes doing the same thing as well hourly stokes curling down a little bit um, but for the most part they are up and usually when we see all of them in, head in the same direction we do get fall through in that direction however looking at just the looking at just structure on the lower time frames uh it doesn't really look like that it looks like we want to graze the lows again maybe maybe come back down to like 7100 and then perhaps try a bounce from there on the lower term time frames and if we are just looking at the lower term time frames i need to get rid of all these uh thingies right here although those are kind of those are kind of useful to be fair um uh, you know, if we are just looking at the lower term time frames, let me put on this. We could mark this off. I'm probably using higher time frames for that uh, to get that one right there. But we could mark this off as it stands as some sort of a symmetrical triangle. This is on the. <laughs> no, this is not a symmetrical triangle. Jesus Christ, man. I'm sorry. I'm I'm drinking too much opium right there. Um, 
fair enough. That's really all that, that's really all that has to be right here. Um, <clears throat> you know, even just this trend line right here, that's been governing all of our highs. <sighs> Hard to be even short term bullish till we get back above there. Um, so yeah, you know, today, you know, the, the daily price action, I don't have too much of a strong, um, uh, feeling on, you know, do we, you know, do we try a little bit of a bounce? Do we, do we have further continuation of the downside? I don't care. It's the major levels as always that dictate the macro for Bitcoin. And in this case, um, I do, uh, you know, I do, I do still think that the macro is bearish. Unfortunately, um, let's go check out the 12 hour. Uh, what is 12 hour looking like? 12 hour Stokes curling back down. In fact, accurately getting the top yesterday, right around 7,300. Once again, beautifully done. We are below all major moving averages on the 12 hour as well. We do see 12 hour RSI is bearish. We do see that 12 hour jewel is in a more bearish posturing, but not a signal. Um, historic volatility percentile is still contracting, kind of. Uh, no, it's, we're, no, we're not really doing anything there, to be fair. Um, what about a four hour? What, what are we looking like on over here? Yes. Okay. So the, the big move is yet to come. Of course, volatility still suggesting that we probably get a spike somewhere in this region here, which would be in that mid to maybe even later January, which is likely going to be the resolution of the greater range. That would be 6,900 to 7,550 at this current uh, price point. Three hour, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to imagine it's probably agreeing with that. No, three hours actually crushed right here. So we probably do get a short term move. Uh, so we got three, three hour, two hour, an hourly historical volatility percentile still contracting. So all of those are kind of winding up. So we probably do get a short term move later this week. I, I do think that that's quite likely. Um, we, 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 we very likely get a short term move later this week, you know, to the tune of like 200, maybe 300 bucks. Is that enough to break it either which way? Well, if we do break, you know, to the downside, like 200 bucks, well, that actually will break some pretty critical areas to the upside, um, would basically test the tops out of our range on the short terms, which doesn't really do anything again. Um, so Bitcoin was, you know, making it, making it difficult to remain bullish on this. Um, anyways, uh, let's see what's, what CME is doing to CME's, um, CME's don't look too hot right here. I think that they are, I, I, I know that traditional markets are closed for today. I don't know if futures are though. Um, I'd have to look into that. Um, daily on CME's looks like we are not trading today. Yeah, we didn't, oh, we didn't trade. Yes. We didn't trade yesterday actually. What that, hold on. Do we, is the 31st off and then, and then the first is a half day. Hmm. Okay, well, well, we can just go look at SPY. No, SPY, SPY was trading yesterday, of course. Of course it was. Um, of course it was. Um, okay, fair enough. Okay, okay, cool. All right, so today is today's definitely going to be an off day. Yesterday was a half day, and then trading will resume once again tomorrow on the 2nd. All right, that's how I understand that. Futures are different, though. I, you know, again, when I was a professional trader, I was trading, you know, traditional markets. Um, I was not trading futures, so uh, I do not actually don't I, I don't know um, a healthy amount of I don't know today this morning. Anyways, um, okay, cool. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Uh, let's go back to CMEs for a bit here. So let's see how CMEs closed. Uh, CME CMEs closed the weekly, or sorry, not the weekly, the monthly um, under the twenty one. But this is not really fair to say because it does it just doesn't have enough history here. Um, you know, it's really, it's only been populated for like the last five months. So it's not, not really anything to go off of. Um, monthly stocks would be bearish again. I think it's a little bit too early, a little bit too, uh, too, too, too low of data points to make anything out of it. I mean, technically speaking, <laughs> ever since CMEs came aboard, we have been in a pretty nasty downtrend, you know, <laughs> but again, I don't think it just doesn't have enough, uh, price action history to really, um, uh, do much more of anything, unfortunately. So we can't really make too much off it. Um, let's go check out uh, Bitcoin dominance. BTC.D. Um, still bullish on this. Monthly had a pretty damn good close. Um, long term, I'm still bullish on this. Short term, we probably do come down a little bit. Short, medium term, we actually probably do come down a little bit. Let's go do a daily for a second. Um, no, I, th I think we've kind of had that down move. I, I think that we'll base off this 21 again, like 69 and in, in, in three quarters. But uh, I do think that it gets reaccumulated and then we and then we pop back off. Long term, I'm very bullish on this. Short, medium term, it's going to ebb and flow. Um, I don't really feel too strongly about that. But if I had to call it here, I'd probably say that we put in a base somewhere right around here and then rally off there. Um, so most alts for Satoshi is going to be getting crushed. I don't really don't want to look at too many alts today, but I do want to follow up on Mr. Buterol and Mrs. Litecoin from yesterday. They were the canaries in the coal mine. Remember, we saw this close yesterday and everyone was getting very bullish off this. This was very bearish. And this is the beauty of using moving average. Or you don't even need to use fucking moving average for this, for God's sakes. Downtrend. <laughs> Down fucking trend, huh? Uh, 
<laughs> anytime that that buterol has even gotten close to the 21 it's been a sell and uh, again once again having this move happen on a weekend was a damn good signal that uh, this was going to get faded as we said was likely um, again not saying these things to sound arrogant or anything like that but just you know to get that information out there the weeks the weekend's price action is typically faded during the week typically faded in the real direction is during the the real trading week um more often than not not always but i'd say nine out of ten times that's going to be the right call and so when you do see a move over the weekends it's probably gonna get faded um and we are kind of constructing a little bit of a bear flag on the lows on this baby as well uh with the bottom side support somewhere right around uh, 126 so anywhere below 126 on a daily little close and i would be looking for the next measure move to be initiated which would bring us back down to our prior lows of 116 and at that point i mean the weekly is pretty fucking wrecked already um the thing is, is you really would expect like a more, 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 more of an attempt of a bounce in this region. I mean, man, this, this thing could get back up to literally like 168, which would be a pretty hefty move from this region. In fact, let's see, that would be a 23 and a quarter percent move or sorry, 23 and a half percent move. And it's still being a heavy downtrend. It's not till we get back above uh, about 190 where this, where the weekly actually does uh, reverse. So that would be 64 and a half percent move to literally get a higher high on a weekly. Wow. Uh, and that in the 21s well below that area uh, this, this is pretty wrecked as well um, fair enough fair enough uh, let's go check out mrs litecoin really quick i know i said i wouldn't focus too much on shit coins today but um because traditional markets are going to be closed today well might as well um mrs litecoin same thing kind of like a little a little bit of a rising channel bear flag right here same sort of a move fades to 21 i would say as long as below the 21 we are still trending to the downside the big issue with this one is that daily soak's been crawling their way the whole way up here price action hasn't really done anything of too much note and uh the second that they cross down i would be expect expecting to move probably back down here to like 39 and, and a half and probably even lower than that for a more aggressive target of 37 and a quarter looking at uh, daily rsi bearish hidden bearish well actually no not hidden bearish divergence um but bearish nonetheless and of course this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor but uh mostly shit coins look shitty uh crazy crazy i'm curious what what, what ripple me nipples is doing um ripple actually looks like it's setting a base ripple actually looks like it wants to rally uh funnily enough uh funnily enough man maybe it does maybe it does um okay let's go check out gold i'd still say that gold is one of the is one of the biggest bullish things potentially for bitcoin but gold is now putting in a short-term high right here i would expect a little bit of a pullback um probably you know where's this likely to pull back down to i do think that's uh low 1500 would be kind of likely actually let me just raise this guy up raise them right around here raise that roof somewhere right around there um overall though i do think that gold is still bullish um however uh looking at this probably does have a short-term medium-term pullback looking at the weekly um weekly looks more or less good looking at the monthly which we just closed monthly closed very very healthily i do like that read as well um and we do still see that uh, monthly rsi very bullish monthly stokes a, what you'd expect to see during a strong trending move um and on top of that um do we see anything on the jewel on the daily perhaps no it's it, the 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 jewel is ready for a pullback on it on the daily yeah lower time frames ready for oh the four hours presenting a jewel sell signal right there uh one dildo ago so it told, told you to sell right around 15 24 um and i do think that this is going to have some weight to it so i i do think that we get back uh, brought back down to uh, low 1500 now here's the thing um gold and bitcoin do seem to be correlated on the macro um if we pull up the correlation coefficient right here i do want to show this once again this is one of the more bullish things for bitcoin because uh, gold did have a nice move to the upside purple histogram showing that on the weekly the weekly trend is you know more or less correlated and uh gold you know having another breakout to the upside after putting in the base um you know on, you know on that last major down uh does bode a little bit well for bitcoin so i would say while I, I really need to see that happen on bitcoin first if we could trade back above 7550 that would really start to uh, that like i said anywhere above 7550 on like a on a higher time frame close i actually do think that we'll get back into the mid 8000s off of that um and perhaps even more you know more after that um however one thing at a time so we'll we'll, we'll, we'll take it as it comes um no pun intended wink wink <laughs> anyways um 
yeah uh, let's go check out gbdc gbdc uh very 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 abysmal yesterday uh we spoke about this as kind of like the deciding factor yesterday if you listen to like the end of the videos usually these things start to come out um but yesterday we saw an absolutely monstrosity of a close for monday that got further fall through yesterday that's what angled the analysis yesterday towards more bearishness after that initial pop so to follow up <clears throat> again from yesterday you know yes we did expect that pop up i was saying 7350 we got up to 7300 close enough um for me and then getting that quick wick uh, back down usually does get fall through. So um, even on like a lower time frame like a four, we're still trending to the downside as long as we're below, let's call it like 7,200 on a four hour total closing basis. So um, again, I'm not too focused on the lower time frames here, but I do think that um, looking at GBDC, which is currently on its lows, um, currently on its lows from, I believe the 17th to 18th of December. Yeah, 17th, 18th of December right here. It does, you know, it's pretty much back down around there. Um, that does not bode well for Bitcoin either as GBDC typically leads Bitcoin spot to the downside and then follows it to the upside. So whenever GBDC does dump, it, it doesn't look good. And that sort of same area would be back around here in this region, actually right around 6,900, a little bit lower in fact. Um, so fair enough, you know, another thing to be cognizant of um, uh, traditional markets getting a little bit of a bouncy bounce. Um, however, I, you know, usually to start off the new week of a new year, like the first few days is going to be, you know, a little bit of downwards action. I don't think that this is reversing right here, right now. I think that this is, um, I think that we probably have a little bit more down to go perhaps. And then I'd be looking for a continuation of the upside. I don't see any real reason to be bearish on stock market right now. Um, this must be very, 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 very frustrating for, uh, crypto, um, enthusiasts who are also crypto anarchists for the people who are reasonable this is just another day and fair enough um, but looking at this right here we do see that traditional markets um, well traditional markets are very fucking bullish uh, extremely good monthly close monthly RSI very fucking bullish monthly stokes exactly what you'd expect to see on a strong trending move I mean we've been holding the same area that we've been holding since 2009 remember when we remember when we saw the spike down in uh, February of 2019 we said yeah that's probably buy well it takes a while for it to happen but that was way on over here. That was the you know the 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 time when we got bullish on stock market once again was was this guy right here. I mean, it moves slowly. I understand for people in cryptocurrency land, it, this is this is too slow, but uh, that's a trend, man. That, that's a strong trend. Now, I will say this: um, on the monthly, Bitcoin and traditional markets are actually heavily correlated. So the hate between or the or the um, the animosity between the crypto anarchists and uh, the traditional land people, which I don't fucking understand to begin with, is we're trading inanimate objects here. You can't fall in love with these pieces of shit to begin with. Um, but, uh, but you know, over the long period of time, they actually are a lot more correlated on the macro with each other than they are not. So a strong traditional market does bode well for Bitcoin in the long term. The thing with this is, is that we, if we actually do overlay this, and uh, this is kind of like, this is what I'll kind of leave, uh, leave you with perhaps. Um, let's put on... Uh, BLX here, um, and let me put this on a line chart as well, and put this on log scale, and take these moving averages off. We can see uh, with with Bitcoin in the orange line chart and uh, SPY, the major bores for U.S. indices, um, uh, in the blue line chart, that Bitcoin typically tops out first on the macro. And then it's followed by traditional markets. And then traditional markets make the first move up and Bitcoin follows after that, a little bit after that. So we have this example right here. Well, actually they kind of just top out at the same time right here. And then traditional markets are making new all-time highs before Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin follows maybe a few months later. Um, same thing right in over here. Same thing right in over here. Bitcoin tops out much sooner and follows much later. And same thing perhaps right here as well. So that's only two to three iterations, which isn't so great, but it's something so i do want to i do want to provide some sort of hopium but um yeah you know I, I just think that the animosity between these two fucking gangs is is silly i mean it's you're looking at the same fucking thing really um anyways back on to bitcoin um lower time frames i don't really want to touch here because i don't feel all that strongly about them if i had to call it i'd say we probably get another sweep to the downside maybe back down to like 7100 um but until we actually breach 7060 or 7050 let's call it 
just for ease of conversation. Um, I don't really see like this whole formation falling down just yet. I still think that could take a few, uh, you know, a few days, maybe later this week, early next week, something like that. Um, and, uh, and it's the higher time frames that are really what I want to be aware of here, which are pretty much unchanged since we've, uh, since we last spoke. Um, as long as we are above 6,900, hard to make that next major move to the downside. As long as we are below 60 or sorry, 7550, I don't really want to be short, medium, or long-term bullish, even though if we got back above there, long-term wouldn't be the right term, um, but I would be looking for a move probably into, probably into this region here, um, and then we can play out the game once again. So for right now, Bitcoin's still kind of caught in limbo. This 40-minute video, Jesus Christ, sorry about that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I want to wish everyone a very happy uh, new year, man. Um, last year was fucking incredible. Uh, creating this community, getting to know everyone was sincerely amazing. Sincerely fucking amazing. It added a shit ton of value to my life in the sense that, you know, I felt like, um, I felt like you know, I was actually a part of something, that we actually built something really, really cool here. And hearing a lot of people's stories is truly amazing like truly fucking amazing um you know yeah there you know there's there, there's a, there's haters and trolls everywhere as well um that's that's fine that's okay man i understand that this channel is not gonna be it for everyone um but but the, but those sorts of stories uh that people tell me i mean fucking hell man that is sincerely awesome and that is exactly why i created this community to have to have to have to, to be surrounded by more people who are just who are just going after what they want it doesn't matter what you want as i mean as long as it's good and if you have any fucking sense in your life you will go after good things because you know that's it's not just good for for others but it's also good for you too um and uh and that's that's the kind of people that i want to be around and i'm i'm so fucking proud i'm so fucking happy that i i, I believe that that's what we've built and so i want to say a very very sincere thank you let's look into the camera um it's 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 truly been incredible this last year and uh <laughs> my eyes like start to quiver a little bit um but uh but yeah man i you know i really mean that and um you know it's 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 all i have to say is thank you man thank you and and also girls and whatever gender pronouns we have watching these videos of which we do have according to my analytics uh like uh, a half a percent of females here so those six sons of bitches uh <laughs> it's even better to know you sorry i mean that in the most in the most uh lovingly way possible it's a term of endearment i will also call you a beautiful lady if you if that's what you should find if that was you prefer, if that's what you prefer as well anyways um i'll be doing a twitch stream later today uh not during the morning but later today probably another long stream as well um really been enjoying those too and uh so if not if not uh if not later i'll see you tomorrow perhaps anyways take care and again wishing you well for the start of uh, 2020 and every year beyond and forwards from here take care and uh, until next time